make sure that you want this for the right reason. I just made up this dream in my head. Keep moving when you just can. It was just a glimpse of hope that I could be more. I'm Camille Leblanc-Vesne, and uh, I used to be the fittest woman on earth. Gymnastic was really my first love, and I did gymnastic for a very, very long time. If you're going to invest so much in something, like, either find a way to enjoy it, because uh, let's be honest, we have to do a lot of things that we don't necessarily enjoy, um, but find a way to enjoy it, or like, there's no point in just showing up to show up. One day I woke up and um, I was done uh, with gymnastics. I, I started to get injured a lot and uh, I started to fear a lot. Uh, I wanted to go to the Olympic when I was young and I realized that that wasn't going to happen. So I think I just, I just was over, over it. I really went on a hunt to find my next passion. And it was like, I am going to do something I'm passionate about, something that, you know, light the fire under me. I'm not someone who's like focused on trying to have like, you know, tons of money or a nice house. Like as long as all my family is happy and I'm following my passion, um, I'm pretty okay with that. I've always been uh, obsessed with growth. I always love challenging myself. So the idea of being a beginner for me, um, part of it really excites me um, because it's like you have so much to grow from. Uh, I think I was 20 when I found CrossFit and it was just nice to find something um, that you can feel like an athlete forever and that you can keep coming and competing and uh, give like kind of myself a second chance because it didn't work out in my previous sport. You know, let, let's be honest, life is not fair. So you can like work your ass off like a crazy and you're like, it's gonna happen and then it doesn't. And, um, and it's okay because if you focus on the effort you put in, you can look back at whatever didn't happen and you won't have regret. You'll just be like, you know what? I try my best and you know, I'm proud of myself and let's go back to the drawing board. And this is just a step and that's it. And not the end of the world. Not being like result oriented, but really being like process oriented. And that like has translated in my life in some major, major ways where like just trusting the process, trusting that every time you keep showing up, you do get better. And it's like this uh, mentality of little by little becomes a lot was just like what really helped me like get propelled further. And also I think being so much more okay with failing because failing is lessons and that's it. So I just learned about this uh, CrossFit game things, which was very exciting. Um, so I kind of used back then my training to give myself a break from my school and my school to give myself a break from training. And uh, it was literally no time wasted. I, I had school from 8 a.m. to around 6 or 8 p.m., depending on the day, with one hour break for lunch. And I would wake up at 6 a.m. 
I would run to this little Globo gym at school, try to do some training. Then I would be in school all day. I would sleep on, they, they had this couch at the school somewhere like a lounging area. I would sleep there for an hour, like with everyone there. I just couldn't care less. I would sleep on the couch, like eat during my class and then go train again at night. And then I would come back and study until 10 p.m. It was like workout of the day on the website. And uh, I couldn't do most of it because I was um, in the global gym. So there's no ring, no pull-up bar, there's no anything. So I had to make shift my equipment. I remember my, my, my teacher would often, um, I had a couple of teachers tell me that they thought I was so disrespectful for showing up in my gym clothes all the time. But for me, it was like, I literally just ran from the gym to not miss the class because that's all the time I have. And then, you know, they would reprimand me for eating in their class and they would reprimand me for, um, you know, doing a lot of things um, until the day I won. <laughs> and then it's funny how people change after that. There was no other choice because I had, I just made up this dream in my head that I was going to go to the CrossFit game. It was so exciting and I didn't want anyone to, um, to make me stop of dreaming or make me feel bad for dreaming. I just like was doing me for me and this is what I wanted to do and this is what I was going to do and I'm not hurting anyone and uh, I'm sorry if your standard is to show up in class and uh, you know very very well dressed because that's what you know a lot of engineers they just dress well for work well I guess I'm not your typical girl but I'm also here to break the mold of what we should or shouldn't be because you can do it all and be it all. The first time I went to the CrossFit gym, it was just a glimpse of hope that I could be more and I could have more than I guess where I grew up because I'm from a small town. And it just gave me what I needed to believe in myself, to propel myself to something that I've never been around. Um, it's, I mean, it's hard enough to do uh, what I've done, but I think it's really hard when you don't know anyone who has done something similar. After my first time going, I came back home and a lot of people told me that I just got lucky and um, uh, that this was never going to happen again. And, you know, when the, the good people were going to find this, I was going to be out and, uh, you know, thanks for the pep talk, people. <laughs> I knew, I knew it was there since my first CrossFit game. I just, I could feel it. I could feel it. I would, I would sit outside and, and I don't know if I created it. I think I created it, that feeling. I would, I don't know if you have ever sit outside and you look into the sky and it's just infinite and your heart feels so light and that's what I think believing is and I would just often sit outside with my breathing and recreate that feeling over and over and over again never underestimating other people and never overestimating myself <laughs> and to really put everything, every day in it. And like, when you ask what it takes, it takes everything. It just takes everything. Um, there's no going out. So you let people down around you all the time. I put everything in so there wouldn't be any excuse down there to not be my best. And then I would really know where I stand takes everything but 
on the flip side, it's worth it. Make sure that make sure that you want this for the right reason. Um, my baby was born at 30 weeks, so she was 10 weeks early, and um, I had, a, sorry, an emergency C-section. Um, and as soon as that happened, uh, I started to be followed very closely with the people at the hospital. Um, and at first, I just thought that's how everyone was, and then I realized that they don't follow people as um uh, tight as they were doing with me and the reason behind this is because of how Zoe was born I was like this prime candidate for postpartum depression um, which happened and it's still happening uh, uh, right now so um, sometimes it, it's hard but because I have um, I, I understand how like some of the chemicals in the brain work I understood that uh, in relation to fight that, I had to have like a lot of discipline, which is really hard when all you want to do is sleep in bed. Um, so I would really have to force myself, like take a shower in the morning. I know it sounds it, it sounds so normal for people, but when you're um, in like a really, it's like this great cloud always over your head and you're just still pinned down in your bed. and. Uh, but I made a list of all the things that I know are really good for like mental health that go with taking action. Um, so instead of focusing on like, oh, like I'm, you know, I'm like listening to thoughts in my head that I don't like, um, I would instead try to talk to myself. Um, a little something I learned with my mental coach is your brain can only say X amount of word a minute. So you can either listen to what it's saying or you can talk to yourself. And then at least you can kind of take a little bit of control over the dialogue that's happening. So I would try to like write down, um, you know, things that I wanted to tell myself and I would just like read it and just read it to try to push a lot of the other things away. Take a shower in the morning. I would go for a walk, even if it's just 20 minutes, and I would try to really focus on eating like good quality food. So I would put the timer on my phone to make sure I was eating regularly, and also try to eat just like real food. Um, and then I would journal every night. And it takes a lot of discipline to do that. Um, but that really, I think, like helped me um, not go somewhere that could have been really bad because I, I someday I would have a glimpse of where that could be. Um, so I do think like like moving and be able to like have this endorphin kick in, you just feel so much better after. And I think it's a game changer to try to stay on and healthy and happy or as above water as you can. Some things that I go back a lot in tough time that uh, help me a ton in my life is uh, pulling back on past experience. So pulling back on really hard things that you've done or really, um, you know, hard emotional or physical or um, say it's time. Look at um, that time and see, how, first of all, see that you were able to go through it. Um, and then try to find those lessons that you learn from there. And um, for me, I remember um, like high school uh, was rough for me um, on the bullying side. And I went through it. I'm back on the other side. But I remember back then something that would tell me is like, it was this notion that like, it's going to end like it's going to be over at a point. Um, it's just time passing by. Like, what can I do, you know, to keep my mind off of this? What can I do? You know, always a what can I do? And what should I stop doing? And what should I keep doing? So I know I can get through this. I can do hard. 
what have I learned from my past experience? What can I do right now? What should I do? What should I stop doing? And what should I keep doing? Focusing on the right thing and not letting the things that can control, control me. So instead of like focusing on, you know, um, the fact that I can't hold my baby, the fact that, you know, I, I remember it would break my heart because I felt like, because Zoe was in a little isolate and it would break my heart that she was alone. And I'm like, a baby like needs to be held. They need to feel my love. And I couldn't do that for her. And, in, you know, it would have been very easy to focus on that. And that was very present in my mind. And it was really hard. But then it was like, okay, so I can't control that because her being in this isolate is what is saving her life. So what can I control? Okay, they said that me producing milk was super important. So you know what? Camille's full-time job, I will be pumping like a crazy person and I will do everything they tell me I should do. I like clean up my food, drink a ton of water, you know, woke up every three or two hours at night. And that was what I could control. And I just felt like doing something like, I think um, often people, when they're in overwhelming situation, including me, because I find myself sometimes being paralyzed, but a situation doesn't move unless you take action. So trying to find solution and trying to make action to move forward, it's, um, it's very uh, liberating towards like this uh, overwhelming situation so when you feel paralyzed to try to think about something you can do to move forward or find a solution because uh taking action is is what's going to free you from it so um that's kind of what i was trying to do a lot at the NICU but i mean it sounds easy when i'm saying it like this it was really really hard you walk out of there a completely different person there's just no you're just not the same. It keep moving when you just can't. A tough situation has this power. Either force you to grow or see if you're gonna quit. And I think that's always what a tough situation is. It's like this little mountain or this little, uh, you know, if, if you're someone who play games, it's, it's a level. So you just, you're just at the, the end of your level where you're going to have to fight the monster. And, uh, you know, this monster is very often yourself. And it's looking at yourself in a mirror and you just got exposed. And the question is like, what is the lesson, the lesson that this situation is trying to teach me? And am i willing to um you know see it and see myself for who i am or am i going to put the blinders and stay here and if i stay here that's it you don't get to level up so now you're starting to become this person that is going to stay here forever and uh for me like that's terrifying it terrifies me to not grow to stay here um, so that's kind of how I see tough situations. And uh, yeah, sometimes I, I really ask myself how I did it. Um, but also I was just at the NICU for three months and you know, it's okay. And it's okay um, to understand that it is a tough situation. It's okay to know that it's hard but also you have to remember that you can do hard things and it's just hard. Hard thing is just hard. We, we do them all the time. We always make hard decisions. We, you know, we have hard breaks, we break hearts. We just, there's just a lot of hard that happen. Um, so I think where we can get a lot out of a tough situation is trying to learn from that situation. And sometimes learning from that situation is also not just you but it's learning how, you know, other people feel, how other people, you know, have grown their past and then learn to have more compassion and understand every situation. 
Um, that's what a tough situation is. That's what tough, I think that's what being tough is too, is always going into things with a clear mind, an open heart, and just be very vulnerable in, in learning and just growing. Gosh, that was ugly. I was bullied to the point that um, I wanted to to disappear, like literally disappear. I started to lose a lot of weight. Um, and um, to the point that I knew some they were harder than others. So for, for some reason, um, Thursday was always the day that I was bullied the most. Wednesday was not bad and Friday was not bad, most likely because the weekend was around the corner. Um, but every day it was like, there was just a pattern and that's like how much I guess it was happening that you end up noticing a pattern <laughs> um, in the whole thing. And, um, you know, having like, um, it, it's hard to be bullied when you don't know why when you're a kid, it's hard to understand why, because not everyone is raised the same way. So I think you make up in your head that everyone is raised by like loving parents, like I had, and uh, that the main value in my family was kindness and hard work. Yeah? And uh, it's hard when you're younger to understand why other people like, hate you for reason that you don't get um and back then it was devastating because i'm so hard on myself and it was hard to understand why i was getting picked on when you're kind and you're never doing it back and it, it's like you just it's just hard to understand that um some people just want to hate you <laughs> And there's no reason behind it. And when you're a teenager and you all you want is be loved and being approved when you're a teenager and that's not happening, just go talk to one more person. Like, I guess I chose the wrong person to talk to. So try someone else. There is people out there like willing to listen to you. Then talk about it a lot because if it's out of you, it's not eating you alive inside. So um, that would be my advice. And you know, on the flip side, if, you, if you're someone who is bullying, um, I'm sure that you're going through something hard. Like there has to be a reason why you're doing this. Like, why don't you assess that and find a way to love yourself? instead of trying to push in your hate on someone else. It's, it's sad to say, but you don't want someone to commit suicide because of you. And you don't know. And, but then you have to live with that. Even though now you don't know the effect you might be having on that person, it can be this long lasting thing that you're part of, which is horrible. I would not wish that on anyone, but there's perspective to have on each side.